pretty much a half of this book is dedicated to what I call a finger technique. Well, the same words as in Russian school. It's very rarely when in music we see pure scales, just as they are in scales. Uh, more likely we'll see different scale patterns, but with all kind of little twists and turns here and there. And this is why these first 30, 31 exercises are so useful. The uh, movement of a melody within the exercise there is quite unpredictable. So depending on what is the task, one can choose plentifully from whatever is on offer. I have to say that within this first half uh, of Hannon exercises on a finger technique, the tasks do differ depending on what speed one plays them. So if you are playing them slowly, it's fine and it's wonderful to check firstly on the finger activity and secondly on what the wrist is doing. Any exercise will do. Uh, shall we look at number 21? If I just play the right hand again with placing my finger on my wrist, we start with a little circle. So it's nice to see where the wrist is following. And then we go up, another circle. of wrist and activity of fingers very nicely. You will ask me um, where that will be necessary. Well, think of any cantabile melody in any of, say, Chopin pieces or whatever, where wrist really has to follow the line. So that's a nice way of training it. And it can be played slowly and beautifully like Chopin Nocturne, if you wish so. It doesn't need to be mechanical at all. I have to say that I also like that among this first half uh, of exercises there are some really useful ones to develop rotation. There is no really rotation movement within scales, so it's nice to find something where it can be developed. And numbers like 13, 14, 15, number 31, it produces wonderful opportunity to start on rotation uh, within the narrow intervals, like thirds or seconds. Now, my firm favourites in this book are exercises from number 32 to number 37. And those are designed for uh, developing flexibility of thumb. It's quite an issue. And actually, I do start uh, with number 37. So what is very useful in the number 37, and if it's done correctly, is that it teaches the hand uh, to do many things which are very useful for piano technique. Like the first one, when we play the chord, either with the sound or silently, we really have to point fingertips strongly, they are glued in firmly. Then we can in up space underneath to move our thumb freely. But also we need flexible wrist to be able to move from C and then eventually to G. So, so many benefits in just one exercise.